automatically I want to get in it and look at all of the carbon Hey guys, welcome to another daily vlog and at the moment I'm smashing out the editing. I've ended up being on the phone for about an hour and 45 minutes this morning and I've got a meeting at 11 o'clock so um, it's not going to be long until I'm out in the car but right now um, I've got a rush to get ready for the day. Make myself look a little bit more presentable than just getting out of bed as you can tell from my hair and um, but yeah, let's get in the car and let's have a proper catch up, find out what we're doing today and go from there. We are on the move, and as you can see, it is super bright outside, hence why I'm wearing my super bright sunglasses. And we're en route to what I thought was Beaconsfield. Beaconsfield is a really, really nice part of um, the world. I think it's in Buckinghamshire, almost certain. But it's a place um, that I have grown up not so far away. My nan used to live just outside of Beaconsfield. It was an amazing place and uh, some really really nice houses we're going slightly further than expected which means I'm gonna be slightly late which um, isn't the end of the world because I've still got enough fuel so I don't need to fill up and take another 15 minutes or 20 minutes or even half an hour out of my journey I'm gonna let you into a uh, little secret because I realized that I was running late I haven't edited the vlog that you watched yesterday at the moment this is the latest I've ever left my daily vlog to go live. Towards the second half, there's a, oh my God, uh, oh, it's a 650S. Oh, did you see it? I looked at it and I was like, oh, McLaren, 15 plate. And I was like, no way, it's P1s. I went to grab that, realized it was a 650S. Oh, that was a proper geek freak out there. Just as I was getting sentimental about the daily vlogs. <laughs> this is the Nissan and Renault headquarters and I've just seen a Mazda go in. Can you see it there? Look, Mazda RX-8 is going into Taunton Nissan. Meeting complete and I'm just driving uh, behind the offices because I want to show you these outrageous potholes that I'm having to dodge. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I needed an excuse to get out and drive in this wonderful weather. And that excuse has come from Instagram, official D Fisher, who I met at Wilton House, uploaded a picture of a line of McLarens not so far away from where I live. So I am en route there right now to check them out. But I also want to use this opportunity to um, make an announcement. I think it's um, probably best that I make an announcement here. <laughs> on the YouTube channel since Chris Evans has announced the application process for the new Top Gear presenters. I've had quite a lot of tweets, quite a lot of text messages, quite a lot of emails, quite a lot of Instagram messages, quite a lot of YouTube comments. <laughs> Pretty much everywhere that I'm active on social media, I've had people uh, sending me the link, tweeting me where saying that I should do it, which is amazing, I mean, I couldn't believe how many people that think I'm capable of doing a job such as presenting a car show as prestigious as that. The problem that I have is the brand Top Gear I think is pretty much dead. Now I'm sure the BBC and maybe Chris Evans will disagree with that the way that they or the plans that they've got in their head to recreate the show but for me and to everyone that I've spoken to about Top Gear during its uh, sort of when it went off air and everything like that it's all about Jeremy, Richard and James and I don't think the show could be replicated at all. I pure, I really think that BBC need to call it something completely different to Top Gear altogether. So as cool as it sounds that you're going to be a Top Gear co-presenter or whatever, like if you apply for this job and it is open to everyone, I actually love doing what I'm doing at the moment on YouTube, doing daily videos, bringing you in on my journey of what I'm getting up to, but I also think that what I am doing is providing like real automotive content, Top Gear, Fifth Gear, TV productions 
and also some of the higher quality automotive YouTube content that you see, which is fantastic, I'm not saying that it isn't, isn't actually real life. Whereas I've always been a firm believer of since owning this car, I wanted to document everything that happens in this car on a day-to-day -day basis so that anyone that wants to buy an R8 or just wants the experience of what it's like to own an R8 can have that on my YouTube channel and I hope that that continues through every car that I get my hands on and I just sort of give you that raw feeling, emotion of what a car brings. Obviously the production quality isn't TV quality, I've never once tried to do that and I've never once tried to be a Jeremy Clarkson Top Gear presenter. I appreciate how many messages I've had saying that I should apply for this job but right now Supercars of London is going in such a fantastic direction that I've been pushing and working towards for the last five to six years. I'd much prefer to do this, grow this steadily, and not jump ship to another brand, like another car channel, and go on TV. Like, I much prefer YouTube, where I get to have chats with you guys across social media. It's much fun, much more cooler. So that is the main sort of reason as to why I'm not gonna be applying for the Top Gear show. It's not cut out for me. I don't know any statistics about cars. I don't know everything there is to know about cars. I just love creating content that you guys enjoy loving. Right now, these daily vlogs are super cool and I've got my own projections and uh, images and visions of where I want to be in a year's time, two years time and it's never been to be a Top Gear presenter or a presenter of a car show. I will always continue being loyal to YouTube. Maybe in the near future there will be an opportunity that comes that is to do with TV but it's more based around what I want to produce and what I want to be in charge of putting out there for people to watch and Top Gear, isn't it? For those that are local to the area, you'll know that this is the Grove. And that is a McLaren in front of me. So we've made it close, up close and personal with McLaren. There's a few of them here. Tesla there. <laughs> Tesla waving at me. <laughs> Let's jump in. The only coupe, the only 650S coupe that is here. Automatically, I want to get in it. And look at all of the carbon. There's carbon everywhere. These seats are really hugging. The last car that I sat in, apart from mine, was um, Sam's Alfa Romeo 4C, which, um, yeah, these aren't as forgiving. If you're a little bit wider than me. <laughs> so there's a line of McLarens and there's some event going on where the people at the event get to drive these cars, which is pretty cool. So McLaren and Tesla are here, and um, I wonder whether I can waste anyone's time and actually <laughs> go for a ride. Highly unlikely. Fast forward a few hours and shove a pair of sunglasses on my face. It's quarter past seven. And I was just about to say this is probably the latest the daily vlog has gone, but I was in London with that MSO McLaren P1 for quite some time, so uh, still got a way to go. But I'm heading to Ilford, which is East London. I've got to drive around the M25, and this is for the London Muscle and London Muscle meetup. So I assume because this is at Jim's Kitchen. There's going to be food, and gym food normally contains meat. So I don't really know what to expect. Um, the one thing that I'm excited about, apart from this guy slowly crossing the road, this is the slowest I've ever seen someone cross the road, who's then crossed back across the road. Crazy. One thing that I am excited about is um, catching up with my friend Damon, who I did a video with last summer, hunting supercars in a McLaren 12C Spider. But he's going to come tonight in a McLaren 675LT. We've made it to Jim's Kitchen in Ilford, correct? And uh, we parked the cars out the back and we're waiting for. Uh, Damon to arrive in the McLaren. It's an orange McLaren 675LT. They're li literally not on the road and he's got to park it somewhere around here. So uh, good luck to him <laughs> and I'm going to film everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
You can tell by the lighting that I've waited a fair few hours for this. Is it just round that roundabout? Yeah. It's taken a while. Success! Success! And this is probably the latest a vlog has gone on for. This is a full on daily vlog today, I'll tell you that. But what an awesome day I have had. It's been quite McLaren based, which um, isn't a bad thing. And it's great to see a 675 LT on the road. So, yeah, really cool to see the uh, McLaren 675 LT on the road. Huge thanks to Damon for coming down at it. Now it's time to head home after a very long day, but what a day it's been. I hope you guys have enjoyed this daily vlog. I certainly have. I will see you tomorrow. I literally have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow. So, oh well. <laughs> what a way to end the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon tomorrow again. I don't even know what he's doing. There's a parking space. Right there. I know it says disabled, but he can go in it. This is.